What's up everybody? Welcome to another Immortal Engines video. Today I'm going to keep it short. This is my Predator 3500 watt generator. Uh, I have the cover pulled off of this generator because it really needs a valve adjustment. It's not running right and I have a feeling that the valves might be too tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab an 8 millimeter after we pull the cover of course. I, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And we're going to pull all four of these screws right here just like that and our valve cover should come off just like that I got lucky and my gasket stayed in one piece but yours might not if it breaks you're gonna need a new gasket so maybe have a gasket already in hand in case he needs one luckily for me it does not so here we have our valves. So I'm gonna teach you something really quick. The valve that's on the side of the carburetor is the intake and the valve that's on the opposite side is the exhaust. Uh, I have a feeling that they're both too tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the engine to top that center. You're gonna pull the cord slowly. Okay, and on the exhaust side, you're gonna check it with your filler gauge on 0 0.007 or 0 0.18 millimeters. And for the intake, it's gonna be 0 0.005 or 0 0.13 millimeters. So exhaust side first for me, 0 0.007. I'm gonna put it behind right here where the gap on the valve should be. And this one's actually okay. I'm gonna check our intake. Intake is also perfect. So, in my case, I do not have to adjust the valves, but if you do, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna grab your nine millimeter wrench, you're gonna stick it on there, and with a pair of pliers, you're gonna hold this screw right here it's, it's gonna be square so you hold it like that and you just loosen it up and then when you adjust the center screw that's how you adjust your valve lash when you're done adjusting the center you gotta re-tighten the nut in order to lock it in there and you gotta check back and forth with your filler gauge uh, to where it feels good this one feels pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the generator just have a look while it's running like that a little bit crazy but hmm I think we got a leaky valve so just running it like that for a little bit showed me a couple of things both are not very encouraging and it does sound like this exhaust valve is leaking. So remember I told you guys that the generator was running a little bit rough? Here, I wanna see if you guys can see this. Excuse me for the poor lighting. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but check this out. Here, I'm gonna try and roll it slowly. You see that? Low, high, low, high, low. The push rods are bent. And that happens when the valves are too tight from the factory. This is the exhaust one. And this one was not so bad. But the intake is pretty bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try my best to straighten this out as good as I can. And after I do that, I'm gonna reinstall it on the generator and I'm gonna do a valve adjustment again because the valves have the correct lash right now only because they already bent this. But when I strain this out, there's not gonna be almost any uh, gap on the valves. They're gonna be really tight. 
and I'm gonna have to actually adjust the valves this time. So let me do my best to straighten this out. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the high spot and I'm gonna push from the top and see if I can get in a little bit more straight. But this is definitely why it's running crappy because it's kind of out of timing, sort of. N not the ignition itself, but the timing of the valves opening and closing, it's delayed by like just long enough for it not to run properly. So that is crazy. I can't believe a generator with 70 hours probably came like this from the factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and straighten this out and put it back in, see what happens. Okay guys, so plot twist. I did a little bit of research on this generator and it turns out that they come with a jet that makes them run a little bit rich from the factory. And I actually watched a video of another YouTuber I uh, would give you his name, but I totally forgot. If I remember, I will list it in the video description. But long story short, uh, the jet in this generator allows for too much fuel to go in. Uh, and when it runs rich, it causes exactly this. It fouls the plug and it leaves soot on the um, spark arrestor and that kind of stuff. So the jet that is on the generator is a 76 so when you pull the little main jet out it has a, the number 76 on it so what i did is i looked on my pile of junk down here that i have and i found this honda eu 3000 is carburetor and luckily for me it still had the jet in it now this is the jet that used to be on the predator but this one had a 75 jet which is slightly smaller so i pulled it out I swapped it out, so I took the 76 out, put the 75 in, and it's running great. It's been holding power with this heater, and now it runs nice and even. I did end up straightening out the, the push rods for the valves, and I adjusted them again, but if you hear the generator, it's running pretty good. It's kind of tricky up here in Reno because we're sitting at about 4,500 to 5,000 feet. So we're right at the limit where you should be rejetting stuff. Uh, and I guess it varies, you know, if it's cold or hot, it really does make the difference of either or. So it's difficult to nail it on the jet, but it's running a lot better than it was with a 76 jet. So I'm really happy about that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna call it good with this generator. I already tested it with a fairly heavy load and it's ran, it ran perfectly. So thank you for watching this video of Immortal Engines. If it was helpful to you, please make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment with any questions, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching.